Greetings again today in that name that's far above every name. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome every one of you. May the Lord bless you. And to you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now this is Preacher Edward speaking. I'm hoping during the hour coming up we can be an inspiration to you. I'm sure Paul has something lined up in the way of singing and music. It'll be a blessing to you. You in the radio listening audience, if you get on your phone and call a friend, have them to tune in and get this hour. You'll be doing them a favor, and we appreciate it so very much. If you have your Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 12. I'm speaking today on this subject, Wicked and Angry Demons. Wicked and Angry Demons. Demons are becoming very angry, and I'll tell you why in my message. I want to speak along that line today. Matthew chapter 12, on page, page 1013 in the original Schofield Reference Bible. Now, if you're not getting our daily broadcast, if you tune into the station where you're now listening, you can get the broadcast Monday through Saturday at 12 o'clock noon. So if you're not getting it, I hope you will tune in and get the daily broadcast. We'd like to hear from you. We do have our Sunday morning messages, music and song on tape. Now tape today will be number 185. If you'd like to have this cassette tape, you request tape number 185. You write in and close a gift of $3 for each tape. We send them to you in appreciation for your support and the gift is used to help take care of our radio expense. I have quite a few listed here. I believe I have about 170 somewhat listed here. I'd be glad to send you a list of our cassette tape and you can write in and get them. Now we also have our brochures for our proposed Holy Land tour for next year. We'd be glad to send you a brochure at your request. Just write in and say, Preach Edward, send me one of your Holy Land tour brochures. We're planning on going to Israel and then from Israel to Rome, Italy on our next tour. Now I know what some of you are thinking. You mean you're going over there and all this hijacking and bombing and so forth? I think because of this hijacking, they're going to make the airports more safer. I know they're far more strict than ever before. And they're going to make them far more safer than ever before, I believe. And then by the time we go, it'll be March of next year, a lot of this uh, terrorist bombings and so forth, I hope will settle down and be uh, uh, done away with. And uh, our governments and other governments are working now, day and night, to try to help the situation. And I think it will be uh, maybe helped in that respect as far as uh, hijacking and things of that type. I'm not worried about it. And uh, so if you'd like to have one of the brochures you write in, and request it. Just say, Preach Edward, send me a brochure on your Holy Land tour for next March. You may say, now, Preach Edwards, that's a long time off. I know it, but uh, what you need to do is get your name on the list. Now, last year in our group, we had 51, and some of them almost waited too late to get on the list. Now, the best thing you need to do is get your name on the list and get your down payment in, and you'll have to have the first of the year to take care of the remainder of it. And the main thing is get your name on the list and they'll instruct you from the agency as to what to do between now and time to go. It's a real trip of a lifetime. So I'm telling you that as you turn to Matthew 12, my mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia. 30603 is the zip code number. You write to me and I appreciate it. During these hot summer days, a lot of people are on vacation, they forget about the work of God. They shouldn't, but they do. Kind of makes it rough sometimes for the preacher that's working by faith. We've been on the air by faith now almost 37 complete years daily. That's a long time, and God has kept us on through His people that love Him and love the gospel and love to support the radio ministry. And we appreciate it. At the end of August, if God permits us to see the Last day of August and still on the air, we'll complete 37 years of daily broadcasting from the classic city of Athens, Georgia. I was talking to a preacher Friday night and he said he 
talked to a man the other day that heard me preach one day and I was really telling the people about how mean it was and sinful it was to try to beat their debts. They need to pay their just and honest debts. And said the man that failed to do that, he got under deep conviction and repented and got right with God and went and paid his debts. And now he's living in fellowship with the Lord. See, you never know who's listening and what's being accomplished through this radio ministry. And you that have keep it on there make all of this possible and God keeps the record. I do know we have a tremendous Sunday morning listening audience. People on vacation a hundred miles away tell me that they picked up the broadcast while traveling. I believe some of our listeners picked it up in Asheville, North Carolina, near Asheville the other day, some of our members rather. And so we have a good outreach in this ministry. And there's thousands and thousands of people listening out there that's getting the gospel that don't go to church any other any, any place. And, and they get the gospel, not counting the dear shut-ins and the aged people that can't travel. They look forward to it. And they get it each Lord's Day and and through the week as often as it can. It's a blessing to them. And I thank God for the open door. And I want you to pray for us and work with us. Now Matthew chapter 12. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from which I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also under this wicked generation. Now he's talking here about wicked spirits. He's talking here about wicked demons. Now demons today are very active in the world whether you believe it or not. And they're angry, they hate God, and they're angry at God's people. And there's a real revival of weakness in the land today. And the demons are taking a major part in it and causing a lot of damage done. And they're angry and they're wicked, they're mad at God. And the reason they're angry is because they know their time is short. They know their days are numbered. They know there's coming a time when Jesus will deal with them and put them in the bottomless pit or in the lake of fire. They know that. And so they're real angry at God. And they're working today because they know they don't have much longer to work. Now they're wicked and unclean spirits. And the land is filled with wicked demons and wicked spirits. In the days of Jesus, he cast many of them out of people. In those days, they were very active and they're very active today. Now let's find out something about these wicked demons and what they're doing and why they're so angry and why they're doing it. Now we find, first of all, they're very busy blinding that lost man. Why would a man walk around, uh, say, get in an automobile, half drunk, drive down the highway a uh, hundred miles out? Why would he do that? The devil has him blinded to the danger of it. He doesn't realize in a matter of seconds he might be in hell. Why do sinners walk around in darkness without God and lost and go into hell and at any minute they may be in hell and never think anything about it? They're out trying to have a good time. Why are they doing that? They are doing that because they are blinded by demons and by the devil. They are blinded. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 3 and 4, If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So sinners today are being blinded by the devil and his demons. They see no danger to their souls whatsoever. Now as some of the people today out in the radio listening audience, maybe riding along in their automobiles, they're in their home or someplace listening to me, they're lost. They're walking in a slippery place in the darkness. Hell moves beneath them to meet them at their going. And some of them will end up in hell. Now why? Because they don't, uh, don't accept Christ. They're blinded. They have in their minds that one of these days before they die, that God will fix them all up and they'll go to heaven when they die. The devil tells them that lie. And God is not going to let any man into heaven unless he repents and receives Christ as his Savior. They see no danger to their health. They go out, they, they drink, they smoke, they get on dope, and, 
and uh, they have their bodies filled with alcohol. They see no danger to their health. And there's people, they listen to me right now, that'll suffer until their body goes to the graveyard, until they die, because they saw no danger to their health in what they were doing up on the earth, and they ruined their health. Now, some of you people listen to me today. You go ahead and drink your beer. You say, well, a little beer won't hurt anybody. That's what these drunkards say. They said that in their day before they became drunkards. Oh, you say a little beer in the refrigerator and a can nine then won't hurt anybody. All right, go ahead, hardhead. One of these days you'll be a drunkard and your children wind up drunkards. You're going to find out exactly what I'm saying today. Many of them started out drinking beer, sipping a little wine, or maybe then taking a little drink, occasionally a social drink, and they end up drunkards upon the earth. Now today, the, the uh, modern name for it is alcoholics, you know. The devil doesn't want anything to sound too bad. So the devil said, don't call them drunkards like the Bible said they were. Call them alcoholics. Uh, don't say that they're weak and sinful. Just say that they, they have uh, this uh, disease and, and uh, don't call them, alco don't call them uh, drunkards anymore. And so they don't see the danger of the nearness of the end. Now the reason for that is demons blinded their eyes Let's they see the danger of the end. Now God's people can see the danger of the end time. It's coming. It's upon us. It's just around the corner as it were. But law sinners don't see that. Some of the people sitting out there today in the radio listening audience. They're one foot in the grave without God on the road to hell. Talking to a man the other day. They ought to be in God's house. He's never able to go to church and, uh, and never able to come to God's house and but plenty able to get in the automobile, drive down to Daytona and spend a week down there rambling around. But never able to go to the house of God. Isn't that sad? And if you should ask that man, are you going to heaven? Oh yeah, I've been saved. I've been saved. I'm just not able to go to church. But I can go anywhere else I want to but to church. I can't go there because I'm in bad health. Now people like that are totally deceived. They're blinded by the devil. They're lost. They're on the road to hell and know nothing about God. Because if they knew anything about God that has something on the inside of them that urges them to want to go to the house of God. Now don't misunderstand me. We do have sick people that are disabled to get out and travel. I know that I'm not talking about that. Now I guarantee you on the authority of God's word they'd be in God's house if they were able. They'd be in the place of worship. But they're blinded. Some of these people are blinded and lost and on the road to torment. Number two, they're active in the work of reformation. Now the devil doesn't care how religious you are, how clean you may live, how good you may be as long as you don't get saved. We have multitudes today that they accepted this little believism from the head and there they made a decision and they're still lost. There they cleaned up their lives, they joined the church, some of them, some of them baptized, never been much good for God because they're still lost. They just reformed. Now the Bible said in my text that this demon went out and then he went back and saw the house he left was swept clean and garnished and he went out and got him seven other demons more weakened than himself and he went back in into that man and the latter state of that man was far worse than the first state. See, he was never saved. He went back and found it empty, swept and garnished. Now that's a picture of many of a person today. They came to church. They made a profession, they reformed, many of them joined the church, they were baptized, and today they're meaner than the devil himself almost. You can't get them in the house of God, and back yonder somewhere they had the names put on a church roll, but they're living like the devil. Now what happened to them? They reformed. A person can reform and remain that way for a long period of time because the devil won't bother them. He wants them to stay like that, and they can go on and live that reformed life. And live a life as clean as a hound's tooth and be just as lost as any poor lost sinner. And you have a lot of them like that today. They're lost on the road to hell on little easy believism. And then you have the ecumenical movement in the land today. And that ecumenical movement is the binding of the tares for the burning. Now the demons today are very, very active. That's one of the most active programs. That's the ecumenical program. And you need to realize that. They are binding up the tears for the burning. Now just the other day, they let this old fellow Sun Yun Moon out of prison, the old crook and devil. They let him out. And what he's doing, he's on the outside among young people binding up the tears for the burning. He's a false prophet. 
He know nothing about God. He claimed that Jesus Christ appeared to him in Korea and told him exactly what to do. That's a lie of the devil. Any woman or any man that tells you that Jesus Christ came to them in person and angels came to them in person, talked to them in person, when they start telling you that, you better button up your pocketbook and step back, step back a few steps because they may have it gone before they get through the conversation. They're a bunch of liars. I don't care who they are. Most all of these cults today is founded by some woman, a man, that claimed that they were talked to by Jesus in person and they were talked to by angels in person and there they started that cult. I can name them today, several of them started by people that made that very statement and their bold-faced lies like Sun Yun Moon leading multitudes to hell and that's a binding of the tares. All of the ecumenical movement today is a binding of the tares. I happened to turn on a program the other day. I don't use it to do it, but I happened to turn on this year PTL club, Pass the Loot Club. And there they had on that thing a man in his underwear, in his shorts. I mean the shorts he wears every day. In his shorts, he had on some kind of a shirt. And some old woman looked like a clown. And they were doing some kind of talking back and forth and twisting and, and walking around. They're in his shorts. And poor old gullible people of support that kind of stuff. And that's the economic movement I'm talking about. That's a binding of the tears. God has nothing to do with that type of stuff. And you better not be deceived by it. Who in the world ever heard tell of a man in his shorts that he wears every day? I'm not talking about what he works in the yard. But I'm talking about his underwear, if you please. His shorts standing there uh, before multitudes on a TV screen. And his wife dressed up like a clown acting a fool. Can you conceive of that taking place in any true Bible-believing church? Absolutely not. Beloved, some people are so gullible they swallow up anything that comes on TV or radio, anything that calls itself religious. They're so gullible they swallow that stuff up and think it's of God. And that's a binding of the tares. That movement is binding tares, tying them together for the burning. And they will be burned when God takes the church out to meet Jesus in there. I don't care if you don't like it. I'm telling the truth anyhow. Beloved, I know what I'm talking about. I can back up what I say by the word of God whether you like it or not. Now you need to be careful about things you see and listen to. They'll look good. They'll sound good. They'll be very sweet. But it'll be of angels, it'll be of the fallen angels, demons and devils. And you'll be swallowing that stuff up before you realize what it's all about. Beloved, listen to me. We're living in perilous times and momentous days. They are very busy in working in reformation. The binding of the tares is the field of reformation today. People reform and they get together and they say we work in love. We can't agree in doctrine, but we we'll agree in love. We're one in love. And each one of us have his own experience and we're all headed for the same place. That's not true for God's people. God's people are not headed for the place they're talking about. God's people are headed for heaven. Now they're talking about headed for the same place and the place they are going is not heaven. Now you need to realize that. Number three, they make it rough for the Christian. That's never been a time when it's been so hard for Christian people to live a devoted Christian life as in this day in which we live. I mean, it's rough. It's not easy. It's hard to take a stand for God today, but God's grace is sufficient. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. Now that's what we're faced with today. A weakness in high places. The devil is busy in the religious world today as never before. And then number four, they're entering the bodies of human beings and animals. Jesus cast demons out of many people in his day. He cast them out of Mary Magdalene. He cast them out of the men of the tombs. He cast demons out of a herd and swine. And of course, we know demons can make people sick and afflict them. There was a woman bound by the devil for some 18 years. Jesus cast the demons out of her and she straightened up. They produce uncleanness. All this uncleanness today you have, even in the religious world, is produced by demons. The other day I was coming out of the post office and there's a van parked out there in front of the post office. And as I started out the door, there stood a long-haired hippie and a hippie woman, a girl, 
She kind of had her hair pinned up on her head, had on a pair of uh, blue jeans, old faded out blue jeans, tight enough to cut her in two in every direction. And there they stood, and his hair was hanging down his back, and you couldn't tell who was the boy, who, the, who, was, who was the girl. And they were locked up on the step of the post office, hugging and kissing and carrying on in a very lustful manner. And people have to go around them to get in the post office. Now, why did those hippies do a thing like that? Demonism. Why did they come to the post office steps to do that? Demonism. If they go in the wall around like that, why didn't they do it in that old van they had? Or where have they come from? Probably did. But why come to the post office, stand on the steps of the post office? That thing bothered me. If I'd have had a good ball bat, I, I don't know. I guess I'd have carried on home, played ball with it. I don't know. But anyway, I, you know how I felt. I, I, I tell you, the, I felt like if I had a, a good ball bat, I'd just see if I could knock a home run and get to it one time. But I, that's the way I felt. I, w I, I wouldn't have done that, but I felt that way. Now, why did they come and stand on the steps of the post office, stand there and hug one another and, and kiss and slob around on one another? Why, why did they do that? And I got to think about that on the way back home. What made them do that? That was a stupid thing them do. And I believe the Lord gave me the answer. This was the 4th of July week. And the post office stands for our nation and our flag. And they want to defy the flag in the nation and as an old hippie, anti-God, anti-Bible, anti-American. And there they came and stood on the steps of the post office and hugged and kissed and slobbered around on one another until it was pathetic. And they did that on purpose because they want to defy the flag and Americanism and what we stand for in this nation, the low-down, dirty dogs. And demons made them do that. It was demon power that made those hippies do that. Most all hippies are demon-possessed. Just about all, they're filthy, they're nasty, they stink, and they're, they're, they're demon-possessed, most all of them. Uh, if they wasn't, they'd get their hair cut and straighten out a little bit and clean up and take a bath once in a while. But they're demon possessed. Now Jesus cast demons out and he said they produce uncleanness. The Bible said here in Matthew 10, 1, And when he had called unto him his twelve apostles, he gave them power against unclean spirits. Now if we had apostolic power, we could cast out these unclean spirits out of these hippies and these drunks and dope addicts, but we don't have that power. We don't have the apostolic power today. God can cast it out, but we don't have the power Paul and Peter and James and John had. It did, we'd get the job done. If I'd have had uh, the power Paul had, I'd have cast the demons out of those hippies there on the post office steps. But I don't have that power. If I had the power that Paul and James and John had, I'd go to the hospital and empty it up today and send them people back home well. But I don't have that power. And you don't have it, nobody has it today. People talk about apostolic power, healing miracles, raising the dead. They don't know what they're talking about. They're deceived. That power's not here today. God can do it. God can heal you in answer to prayer. But no man has the apostolic power that the apostles had today. Now you better believe that. In Revelation chapter 16 verse 13, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of dragons. Now demons are filthy. And of course, they promote uncleanness, whether it be among uh, uh, believers and non-believers. Uh, that is, uh, believers don't get demon-possessed. Don't misunderstand me. But uh, unbelievers do get demon-possessed. No Christian can have a demon in him. No born-again believer has a demon in him. The Holy Ghost won't let him in. But uh, unsaved people do have. But what I was about to say is, many times even church members act like the unclean people of this world and you should keep a clean vessel to the glory of God. Then we know that demons produce the unlawful activities of people. Why did those hijackers there kick that young sailor in the side and kick in his ribs and beat him almost to a pup and then blindfold him and take him out there and, and blow his brains? Why did they do it and throw his body out the door on a hard ground? Why did they do that? They're demon possessed. That's why. Now, when you read about these hideous crimes taking place and some man goes in, he mutilates the bodies of people and there he kills a lot of people, he cuts their bodies up and maybe he bears them. And now, what makes those people do that? They're demon-possessed. What makes people brag about they have committed, uh, uh, say, a dozen murders or uh, maybe 30 murders and they brag about demon possession? That's why. And most of these murders today, these cold-blooded murders are demon-possessed. 
They had a rout in the prisons in Tennessee the other day. And there some of them killed another murderer there. Uh, killed him and, and of course he died there in the prison. But demons got in there among those people and they were filled with demons and they would kill each other and, and be glad to do so and think nothing about it. Demon possessions. These, many of these prisons today are loaded with demon possessed men and women. Now during the tribulation period when the church is lifted from the face of the earth, these demons are going to be so strong in these prisoners until the prisons won't hold them. When the church is raptured out and demon power upon the earth becomes stronger and the devil comes here in person, these prisons will never hold the prisoners. The prisoners will come out of these prisons, they'll tear the walls down, they'll tear out the windows, they'll tear down the doors. The mental institutions will be torn down by the mentally insane and they're all going to be let loose upon this earth. And they're going to run over this earth and run over people like a freight train. It'll be awful during the tribulation period when prisoners will not be able to hold anybody. And they'll all run loose and kill and, and there would be demon possessed upon the earth at that time. In Matthew chapter 8 and verse 28, the Bible said, When he was come to the other side in the country of the Gersonese, the there made him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass that way. Nobody would go by that graveyard and those two men out there. They were exceeding fierce, and that's the way they'll be during the tribulation period when Jesus come. How about what happened out yonder many years ago when Mad Dog Madison had those people eating out of his hands and going out and killing people and taking their blood and drinking their blood and writing their name on the side of their house and murdering people in Cobra. What made Mad Dog Matson and his father uh, Matson and his fathers do a thing like that? Demon possession. And he's still demon possessed. And those followers, no doubt, are still demon possessed. Demon possession. He walked up to a car, a sports car. Fine looking, handsome young man sitting there in his sports car. Mad Dog Manson walked up, pulled out his gun, and he's going to just kill that man just for the sake of killing him and getting his car and leave with the light chains just before he got there and the man moved on. Why would that man want to kill that innocent fella? He wasn't bothering anybody. And he's going to walk up and blow his brains out. Demonism. And you have that kind of stuff in the land. They people kill you and laugh as they throw your body to the ground. They'll laugh about it. And more and more demons are possessing people a day. And you have more and more murders. And they become more numerous on the earth. And will do so as it moves toward the end. Demon possession. We are living in perilous times. And that word perilous means dangerous times. There's never been a time when we're living in such a dangerous period of time as right now. We're living in dangerous days. Whether you believe or not, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm not a pessimist. I'm giving you the truth. There used to be a time 50 years ago when you had criminals behind prison bars. But now you have prisoners out here on the streets, loose criminals, and you're the one behind the prison bars. You're the one that have the bars over your windows and the locks and on doors and, and your burglar alarms and things like that. You're the one that's, that's uh, pinned in, not the criminal. It's changed around. We are pinned in. They're let loose. And the American Cranky Lunatic Union is turning out every criminal they can today out of a, a prison and get them off death row to fill the land with criminals. They are a criminal loving group of people, a bunch of ignorant liberals and infidels that love criminals and hate righteousness and hate God's people and it's pathetic. And so we have much false doctrine in the land today. Demons produce whiskey, dope, thievery, robbery, rape, inhuman act, murders, forced integration, and unenforced laws. Demonism is behind all of these activities like this we have in the land today. And it's pathetic. You need to know God and have God in your heart. Lest demons get in and drive you batty. A lot of these cranky people you find today, nothing the world wrong with them, but demons in them have driven them batty. They don't know half they're doing many times. They commit terrible crimes and do awful things. They produce false doctrine. The reason you have so many false teachers in the land today is because of demons. It was a devil that called Sun Yun Moon out of Korea and sent him over here. It's a devil that sent him today and demons. And in his followers today, it's going around deceiving young people. Uh, they are tearing up, they're binding up the tares. And the old crook, the old thief, uh, they let him out last week. And he'll go around and, and deceive a lot of more people before he dies. God have mercy. We ought to have backbone and sense enough to send that 
uh, the demon-possessed men back to Collier and tell him to never put his dirty foot back on the American soil, but we don't have guts and backbone enough in Washington to do that, and that's pitiful. And more and more demons are going to take over these false teachers. These cults are growing by leaps and bounds. And these demons produce lies. The demons are the ones that tell lies on you, God's people. Tell lies on God's preachers. Tell lies on those that's trying to do right. Demons are doing that. Causing people to tell lies. They lie on God's people. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, For this cause shall God send them a strong illusion, that they should believe a lie. And that all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. And so the demon makes people tell lies. Now you have a lot of saved people tell lies, but demons don't make them do that. They just tell lies. You can call people and say, Missed you in church last Sunday. Are you going to be there next Sunday? Oh, yes, preacher, I'll be there next Sunday. And it won't show up. Call them next week. Uh, I thought you was going to be there. So, well, I was aiming to be there, but, but I'll be there Sunday. And it won't be. What makes church members want to tell a lie like that? Just straight out, tell just straight out a lie. They'd be better to say, well, if I can, I will, preacher. I uh, hope to, but they'll just tell you a bald-faced lie and grin about it and go on about their business. That's pathetic, isn't it? All right, people. You need the Holy Spirit in you. If you don't, demons can get in you and you're in a lot of trouble. Let's stand to our feet. Our Father, today I pray that you'll take the message and use it. Not only our Father here in this auditorium, but I pray, dear God, that you'll use it out in the vast radio listen audience. We know we have wicked demons loose today in the land. And our Father, I pray that you'll help us to realize the only thing we can have to offset or combat demonism is the Holy Spirit of God. Have you in this invitation, I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Now, David's going to play for us. If you're here and God has spoken to your heart about getting saved, about coming back to God, about joining this church, any move that you feel like you should make this morning, I want you to obey the Holy Spirit as she plays for us. You do what God tells you to do.